Okay, in this video, I'm gonna be showing how to make a perspective view in Revit. Again, perspective is where you have perspective, where the vanishing lines actually vanish and are not parallel like an isometric. Um, quick recap in Revit speak, a default 3D view is isometric. A camera view is perspective. And it's important to note that you can't tag things in camera while you can tag things in default 3D view. Okay, let's get started. So here's the isometric view that we made in the last video. Let's go back to the floor plan for level two and do the same space. Now, uh, again, in the first video, I mentioned that you need to have a story or a point or a reason for the view you're making. And in this one for the camera view, we wanna show uh, the access path, which I believe is right here um, and how nicely everything is routed around it. So to create a camera view in Revit, it's a little different than um, um, than the um, default 3D view. Click camera, and then you'll see your mouse now has a little camera icon on it. Uh, click and drag. So left click, hold the mouse down, and pull it like this. So uh, you see where my cursor is? There's a little X. That's basically saying how far. Uh, the view is going to go. So if I just had it here, I would see basically nothing. If I draw it out here, I'm going to see all the way to here, but I'm not going to see, you know, like that that orange pipe right past my cursor. I wouldn't see that if I clicked it right here. So uh, I'm going to sit right here. And then obviously, if I move it around, that means the camera's going to be pointed this way or this way or this way. So I'm just going to go straight down like this and release. Oh, I guess uh, just click again to place the camera. So I now have my 3D view, and this is where it gets a little fussy. So you'll notice there's a stair right in the way and some other weird stuff going on. So we've got our work cut out for us. Very first thing we're gonna do to make this a little bit snappier is we're going to come down here uh, and change it to shaded. Uh, that will make it a little faster to render than hidden line, which is the most computationally um, intensive form. So uh, we've got these blue things, which I happen to know from the last video are generic models. They're security devices. So that should turn those off. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to tile the windows. So let's see, I don't want that one. I do want this one. Close that guy up. Close that guy up. All right. So I've got my 3D view here. It needs a little bit of adjusting. Uh, now, similar to the perspective view with the cut uh, with the section box, um, if I come over here into my camera view and click the edge of it, uh, the camera view is now visible in the floor plan, and I can come over here and I can. Uh, click it around and I can move it. So let's go like maybe here. Again, this is the fussy part. There's no one who can tell you how this is supposed to look. You kind of just have to guess and check until it looks good or until it tells the story you wanted to tell. I think we're going to get we're gonna be closer here. Yeah, we're going to be close here. Okay, so I like, um, I like the location of the camera. At least that's pretty close. Um, yeah, I think I want it to point a little bit more. Uh, I want it to point a little bit more. So I'm going to rotate it. So our space bar, I'm going to click right where it was and then do a little bit of that number. And that was just a little bit too much. So I'm going to pull back just a tiny bit. Okay. I like that. Uh, and now I'm going to come over here, and what I can do is you'll see there's handles on these. I can make these wider just by clicking and dragging. Now you want, you, know, you don't want to get too crazy with this because um, that base you get a lot of distortion if you pull them way out. It'll it'll look real f like a fisheye kind of camera, um, and that can just be a bit much. But I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pull it up a little bit because there's interesting stuff up in the ceiling or up higher in this view. 
Yeah, a big duct bank going down. Um, okay, and then it's still in medium, so we're gonna change it over to fine so we can see our nice pipes, which presumably are not clashing into anything. This is a really nice job, whoever modeled this. Can't imagine how much work it was. Great, great work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, why don't we just move this over slightly? Yeah, I like that. You can kind of see that these pipes are kind of going down like that. Okay, we're going to call that good. Um, again, if you're doing this for production on a real project, you might fuss around with it a little bit more. Um, but this, this gets across what I'm trying to say, which is that there's this nice access corridor. Now you notice it's white there, and I believe, uh, yeah, I believe that's because it's the the cut plane or um, what Revit calls the far clip offset. So uh, I believe that's a millimeter. So we can change this here, um, obviously just by typing it. So it's about 40,000. Let's see what 50,000 looks like. If you watch here, you should be able to see more stuff appear. So you'll, you'll, you've picked up that this is different than a section box. Um, camera views don't have section boxes, they basically have cut planes, which is just a different way of thinking about things. Um, okay, so you look, yeah, it looks like we got to the far wall, looks like there's a door there. Yeah, so that's, uh, we're seeing everything there is to see here. Um, and now just, we're gonna make a couple of uh, graphic changes to make this look nice, go to graphic display. Um, we are going to add silhouettes, uh, something medium, medium boldish shadows. We're gonna do ambient shadows, not cast shadows, because that would be weird, particularly because we're inside. Um, and we're not gonna to touch anything else in here. And again, also, if there were stuff you didn't wanna show, um, you could you could hide these. So for example, let's demonstrate um, that you can do element by element changes. So let's say this guy, we, we like that it's here. We want to know that it's here, but we'd also like to be able to see through it. So we can select it, right click it, say override graphics and view by element, and come to surface transparency and crank that up a bit. Hmm, what's that? It doesn't look right. That doesn't look right at all. Our graphics and view by element. So we crank this back. Hmm. That ain't working. Uh, it's probably because it's an imported geometry. That's interesting. Service patterns. Yeah, it's probably, um, I would guess, this is a fun little um, lesson in debugging. What is this? Yeah, this is an import symbol, so that means it's like, it's some kind of geometry pulled in from something else. Um, Warframe. Yeah. This is not, I think what that means is it's not, uh, it's not native Revit geometry. It's, it's probably, you know, modeled in 3D CAD or something like that. And then they just kind of dumped it in here uh, into the Revit family editor and pushed it in. So that means that it's not, um, it's, it doesn't really behave nicely when uh, you're trying to write things. So, um, so that's too bad. We can't um, make that. Uh, not visible, although we could, uh, we could hide it, but that's probably not a good idea. So we'll just leave that. One thing, uh, so to demonstrate, we could make um, this big duct uh, transparent. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh. There we go. Sometimes it uh, glitches a little bit and you have to let it reset. So uh, yeah, so there it is. You can see that there's more pipes up there. It's transparent. The lines are still nice and bold. 
Um, so okay, so let's say we're happy with that. Um, the next step is to get it on a sheet. Happily, in the last video, we went through the trouble of setting up such a sheet for 2.2. Uh, there it is, and let's, oh, I forgot to, uh, 3D view, 3D view 5, so I didn't need to organize that, put it back over, working views, um, work. Um, and again, in your project, you would have a logical place to put these, um, um, not in working views. Uh, let's call this um, boiler boiler room perspective. All right, and again, we just drag and drop it onto uh, the sheet, and it is too small. Now you'll notice. That when you click on it, there's no there's no scale factor up here. Why is that? Did they screw up? No, it's perspective, and scale doesn't make any sense because uh, this line right here on the screen is I don't know four inches or whatever, and this line right here is obviously shorter, right? Because it's in perspective. That's how perspective works. But in real life, this unit obviously is just a big dumb cube. They're the same. So scale doesn't mean anything when it comes to perspective. We just want this bigger. So there is a way to do that. We, it's called size crop. So select your view, click side crop, and uh, uh, click scale locked proportions. And uh, basically change one of these to be bigger and the whole thing will scale up. So let's call it 500 meters, hit enter, and it'll get bigger. Yeah, that actually looks fine. Happy with that. The title right up there. Cool. And again, like I said, let's see if we can activate this. Um, let's say lock things. Dangerously. Um, can't tag things. TG select something. No, no tagging, no tagging is happening. Um, it just, tags don't work in perspective views. Um, so the best you can do, which is pretty good, is you could do text in the, um, uh, in the title block. So you could say, this is a big box, isn't it? Uh, so you can annotate things kind of by cheating, um, again, You've got the plan views and sections and everything else to really go through detailed and say, this is what this piece of equipment is, that's what this piece of equipment is. Um, uh, so the perspective views isn't really about labeling everything. You shouldn't think of it as that. But uh, you know, if you're trying to tell a story, you can, um, uh, you can use text to, to help explain what it is the viewer is looking at and to tell the story that you're trying to tell. So nice, big, wide access. Corridor. Um, obviously, you probably don't want to be cute with it um, on real drawings, but this is YouTube, so I can do whatever I want. Um, yeah, and there you have it. That's how to do an isometric view. And again, if you want to, um, get an image from that, because that might look nice on a report or something like that, go to File. Export images and animations image, and yeah, I would suggest making it big. Just make it real big. Doesn't matter. Four thousand. Go nuts. Uh, Four thousand pixels. Uh, everything else is fine. Uh, let's put that on the desktop. YBR perspective. Hit OK. Nice.